Jachlor Derek, Jachlor Macroiso, you thought my Heno, your Hanir no song in a key. I have three things in common with Shirley Bassey. Uh, we are both passionately Welsh, we both are passionate about we, what we do, and we both do not do PowerPoint. So you'll be pleased about that. Bit concerned about Derek's introduction. Expert, you will all know the de definition of expert. X defines the unknown quantity, and a spurt is a drip under pressure. <laughs> so again, I leave, I leave it to you to decide what, uh, what the description is accurate or not. OK. Events in Wales. Now, there has been much debate about the role of major events in the wider public policy agenda, and that's why we're here tonight, really. We all agree that they are not a panacea for, cure, for the curing of all Wales' economic and social ills. There are some people who say they are. We do not believe that. And it's right to say that we have to be realistic about what we can achieve through major events. But uh, we certainly believe that if they're organized and managed well, with time, energy, and resource dedicated to leveraging the opportunities that they can deliver, then significant tangible benefits can accrue to the host city and to the nation. And when I say tangible, we don't just mean monetary benefits. You have to look wider than just pound shillings and pence. Sorry, that ages me a bit, but you know what I mean. Now, when you consider that Wales spends considerably less than one half of 1% of the Welsh Assembly government budget on major events, I think you'd agree that they do punch above their weight in helping Wales raise its profile in the world. And I'll mention here the Ryder Cup, and I'll come back to that in more detail, but I don't know if you saw it on TV at the end when Wales, Wales uh, um, sorry, when uh, Colin Montgomery was accepting the trophy <coughs> and saying, he said, the world was watching and Wales delivered. Now, you know, we would pay hundreds of thousands of pounds to get that publicity all over the world. And when you have it said about you by somebody else, it is so much better and so much more effective than when you say it uh, yourself. Now, we should also reflect upon the fact that people in huge numbers from inside and outside Wales, as event organizers, participants and spectators come together to enjoy the shared experience of a major event. That is one of the intangible benefits. The fact that the Millennium Stadium alone here in, in Cardiff attracts one million paying spectators a year is indeed a remarkable statistic. And what we're talking about here are shared experiences that add something special and distinctive to the quality of life in Wales as part of a complex series of social, cultural, and economic impacts. Now, in September last year, the Deputy First Minister and the Minister of Economy and Transport, together with the Minister of Heritage, so it was a big clutch of ministers here, all being very friendly, launched Wales' first major events strategy called uh, Event Wales. And during a period of economic recession and economic hardship, the Welsh Assembly Government saw fit to find a budget of 4.8 million for this major events unit, which is in my department within Visit Wales, uh, because they were convinced of the benefits of major events. The uh, strategy sets out uh, how the Welsh Assembly Government uh, is going to have a coordinated and coherent approach to supporting the major events, not a question of, you know, you shout loudest and we'll give you money for your event. There are very specific criteria laid down as to where we need the event, why we need the event, what benefits the event will bring. And I have to say at this stage, it is not all about Cardiff and the southeast of Wales. Major events strategy is about getting the right kind of event for the right community all over Wales at the right time as well. And it's not all about sporting events, it can be cultural events, events through the Welsh language, um, educational events, major conferences. These are all events which we believe will make a difference. Now, the major events unit uh, did note with great interest uh, Dr. Calvin Jones's important contribution to the communities and culture communities inquiry last year, 
about the lack of rigor in the evaluation of long-term impacts and legacy of major sporting events. And can I say at this stage, I fully support uh, anyone who says that we should have better and far more robust evaluation, not just for major events, but for anything that any government does. And I really am looking forward to what Calvin is going to say tonight, because we do need far better evaluation and far better research into what we do so that we know where we should be spending our money and where, if we've spent it incorrectly, we shouldn't be spending it again. And one of the key strategic objectives of Event Wales is to support the, our efforts in building a strong and sustainable major events industry in Wales. Now, events themselves need organisers, uh, they need producers, they need directors, they need transport people, they need infrastructure. And at the moment, we don't feel that there are enough jobs in Wales um, involved in that industry. And quite often, you have to bring that expertise in from England or even further afield. Uh, and we do feel that by having more major events here, then uh, those businesses, and I see one or two in the audience already involved here, will only strengthen their ability to survive and prosper if we have more major events. Now, the Major Events Unit is also developing a skills action plan to strengthen Wales' professional event management and production capacity. And that is important. We're all talking about skills and the need for education, the need for new jobs. And we genuinely believe that the events industry, in its widest sense, will be able to lead uh, a, a new direction for new, high-quality, better-paid jobs for people who want to stay in Wales and, indeed, who want to come into Wales. And we're already having initial discussions with a number of key stakeholders, including the creative and cultural skills and details, business skills divisions and the sector skills councils involved in all aspects of, of creating events. Now, we firmly believe that the creative sector in Wales, and as you will know, under the economic renewal programme announced by the Welsh Assembly Government recently, the creative industries in Wales has been identified as one of the six major growth areas for economic development in Wales. And we believe that uh, the events industry and the creative industries, there is a huge synergy here, uh, and especially for SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises. And we've already identified live music, for instance, as, one, as a prior priority area for investment and in working with the creative industries. Now, if those of you, uh, those of you remember the Radio One Roadshow that came to North Wales last year, now we did invent a bit of money to get, invest a bit of money with the BBC to get them here. We had strong branding for weeks beforehand on BBC Radio One, not my particular market, but a very important market for Wales. Uh, and then we had things that are totally outside our control, and this is where we use social media today to expand and to le leverage the extra publicity we can get. I'd never heard of Alicia Keys, my daughter had, and she emailed me from New York saying that on her Facebook, somebody had sent her a, a video of Alicia Keys singing, not New York, New York, but North Wales, North Wales from North Wales, and that went viral worldwide. Um, perhaps you are not in the right age group or the market segment to have known about that, but I can tell you if you were 16 to 23 or 24 years of age, you would have heard that, you would have known about it, and you would have heard about North Wales from somebody like Alicia Keys for the first time. So that goes back again to what I was saying about uh, Colin Montgomery. It's getting other people to say positive things about you that's how you earn rep reputation, not by spending a lot of money on your own marketing and saying nice things about yourself, because that's what we all do. Let me just go on then to the Ryder Cup. Uh, I think in terms of a specific example of what a major event can bring to Wales, the Ryder Cup is a very obvious example. Now, a comprehensive impact, economic impact study of the event was published March 23rd, just gone by. This indicated that the impact on Newport alone was 28.3 million, South East Wales 74.6 million, and as the whole of Wales, 84.2 million pounds. Now it should be noted, these figures do not include advertising equivalent values. That means, you know, if you get a page in the paper, you cost that out as by saying, if they say nice things about you, how much would it cost you to pay for that 
uh, advertisement to get that coverage. It does not include that, and I'll come to what we have been able to get as free advertising as a result. It doesn't include the, the leakage, because when we realized the Ryder Cup was coming, when we fought for it, we knew that a lot of people would stay in London, come down for a day and go back, stay in Bristol, come across the day, go back, stay in England, come across for the day and go back. So we discounted all that from those figures. So we knew that we were going to lose uh, a bit of money in that way. But it was interesting that a host of Welsh companies won contracts linked to the Ryder Cup. So we had companies, Andrew Scott, Alan Griffiths, Roe Cord on the design and construction of the infrastructure, uh, and other Welsh businesses benefiting directly from the event, including Pontypridd based Asbury Golf, Set, they were set up as a result of our winning the bid back in 2001 uh, and they then got the franchise for merchandising with Ryder Cup Wales on it. And Clogai Gold, uh, the uh, Welsh based company for Welsh Gold obviously, uh, got a contract to supply uh, merchandise. GD Environmental got uh, recycling and environmental services and a company called Whitehead Electrical got contracts for all the ground electrical work. And as part of the catering and hospitality arrangements, and of course this could be replicated across all events, uh, we worked with the Welsh Assembly Government uh, food and uh, marketing people to make sure that 30 Welsh food and beverage suppliers supplied food and beverages to all those hospitality tents that were there for at least a week uh, in, in um, uh, Newport. We worked with six colleges, Llandrithel, Deeside, Yale, Ceredigion, Bridgend and Barry to get volunteers in and young people in for work experience in all those hospitality areas. Excellent experience for those young people who would never have otherwise got that. And the Ryder Cup company established a corporate club which allowed 36 Welsh companies to access tickets to the 2010 Ryder Cup. And in preceding Ryder Cup events in Ireland and in Kentucky, so we were working over six years, taking 36 Welsh companies abroad, Ireland, States and in South Wales, to allow them to use the hospitality facilities in order to generate business contacts uh, worldwide. And we, we do know through research that whilst maybe soccer is the most uh, watched uh, sport ever, Golf is the biggest sport that is linked with business. Now, whether you like it or not, it's true. Uh, and, and the link between making, doing business and losing business uh, uh, with golf is the highest of any particular sport. So that was very important. And on top of that, golf tourism, this is the spin-off element, the golf tourism really grew and developed as a result of the Ryder Cup. The golf tourism monitor figures for 2010 have only recently been released and they showed the, the impact because we had 41 million pounds, 900,000, 41 million pounds, sorry, spent in Wales last year on golf tourism alone. And that represents an increase of 21% over 2009. You say, well, so what? But that's at a, a period when the number of UK golf rounds had decreased by 5%. So we increased ours by 21%. The whole of the UK had gone down by 5%. Now that is as a result of the, uh, the work that we had done since winning the Ryder Cup, as a result of the Ryder Cup itself, and obviously of the work that we will now be doing to build on the legacy of the Ryder Cup. And we also, uh, because to, to, to avoid the accusation of everything happening down here in the southeast, uh, Ryder Cup, Company Limited and the European Tour and ourselves set up a legacy fund and 40 golf clubs throughout the whole of Wales, as far as Aberdaron and Nevin in the north, have all benefited from uh, projects to get far more participation in golf in Wales by young boys and girls and by women. Women were underrepresented in golf in Wales and young boys and girls were represented, underrepresented. All those figures have gone up. We have seen an increase in participation by young boys and girls and a significant increase in participation by women. And now Wales is probably the first or one of the first in the world which has amalgamated the two golfing unions, Welsh men's golfing union and the ladies golfing union. Most countries in the world still have this distinguish, distinction between ladies, I prefer to call them women, 
uh, but the distinction between ladies and men's golf. In Wales, you have the one golfing union representing men and women, and I think that is a major step forward in trying to break down the stereotypical views that a lot of people still have about golf. And as part of that, our, our strategy in, in Wales and our strapline in Wales about golf is golf as it should be, not stuffy, not anti-women, not anti-young people, uh, not ties and blazers, but about a sport that can be accessed quite often cheaper. A youngster can get out there and borrow a second-hand set of clubs and get a, a, a lesson with a professional on a golf course cheaper than you can go out and buy a replica set of Manchester United uh, um, uh, kit. So it's about perceptions, and we believe that we're breaking those down uh, quite clearly. Then we get on to the PR element, the bits that I was talking about, the um, equivalent advertising value. <coughs> Since we started uh, uh, working on golf PR, it was only about three or four years ago after winning the, uh, the Ryder Cup, the results so far of the PR we've been able to generate on the back of the Ryder Cup for positive PR for Wales tourism is over 19 million pounds. That's 19 million pounds that we would have had to spend of your taxpayers' money to get that positive publicity. Now, we got, got that for a fraction of that amount because all we did was bring the journalists in, take them around, give them a good time. They then went away and filled.